Hello, everyone. My name is Manuel Villarreal. I'm from the University of California, Irvine. I'm in the Department of Cognitive Sciences. And I'm going to present to you some work that we did uh, with Michael Lee and Sahar Badai, who was a undergrad student at the lab. So category learning has been studied in, in both stable and dynamic environments. Uh, The first one is appropriate to under, for understanding how people can learn about stable concepts or concepts that don't change through time. Uh, the second one is appropriate when we want to understand how people learn about stimuli that are assigned to categories and those categories can change. For example, when rules can change and so on. However, both cases assume that there is an independence between a participant's behavior and the categorization problem. And this independence is not always going to be adequate. So let me show you an example with scam emails. And this is actually something that I got in my uh, Gmail account a couple of days ago. And it said, good morning, you've uh, had an inheritance of $8.5 $8 million. And I want you to send me a confidential email. Uh, as a graduate student, I will tell you that I could use $8.5 million. But it is quite obvious, and even Google can tell that this email is a scam. However, there is there, this is something uh, also recent that we got at the university, and it was by Dr. Michael Lee, by my, my, my advisor for some reason, and said, hello, are you available? Please, I need urgent assistance. And it had all the information and so on. So this email is really hard to tell, but it is also a scam. It is written in a curious way, and it has a very particular email address, which has four randomly generated numbers. So this one is now harder to detect. The first one is really easy, and it's a very old scam. There's not that many people who's actually going to respond. This one is actually really hard to detect. It's also a scam. And after responding to it, someone was asking for uh, some gift cards from Amazon. So the idea here is that this previous two emails uh, highlight an important property of some environments or some categorization problems, which is that the relevant features or the features that can help us to make a categorization decision can change depending on how uh, people learn uh, how to make this categorization choices. So in other words, the environment is uh, it's going to be highly correlated with our ability to tell to make categorization decisions in the environment. So we're going to talk about a study where the main objective was to see how participants learn when their accuracy on the task, their accuracy on a categorization tasks can induce changes in the environment. And let's imagine that you're our participants in our experiment. And you sit there, read through some uh, instructions, and then you start the experiment. You see the picture of an animal. There's a gorilla. And you're asked to respond whether the gorilla is healthy or if it's infected with some virus. You give your response. And then let's say that you said that the gorilla was healthy. You get some feedback. And it says, correct, the gorilla was healthy. And you have the history of correct and incorrect responses on the experiment. Now, we had this design for our participants. And if a participant's accuracy was better than 18 out of correct, uh, out of 21 trials, 18 correct categorization out of the last 21, then the category changed without any signal. We have four different categories. They're all related to real diseases that affect real animals. And for example, cryptococcosis, which affects dogs and cats, but it doesn't affect rabbits or rats. And at some point, if you get really good at the experiment, then we would change the category. And if we change, for example, to food and mouth, now we would have that camels would be infected, but dogs and cats are no longer infected. So your categorization, you would give a correct answer if you say the cat is healthy when food and mouth was the correct category. So we had a total of 38 participants. This was uh, in the lab. And they had to make uh, 210 decisions. We also, we have three conditions that differed only on the sequences of the categories. Participants don't know which category is active, but we have a sequence. So this is, these are some of the results here. On the y-axis, we have the accuracy of the participants. And on the x-axis, we have the trials. 
So each color of the graph represents a different category that is active during the, that part of the experiment. And as we can see uh, at the beginning of when there's a change in the category or the rules for assigning uh, stimuli to categories, we can see that there's a drop on the accuracy of participants. This is expected. Now there's new animals that are uh, infected. Uh, however, accuracy regains its levels pretty quickly. And responses reach our threshold again in just uh, some number of trials. So this data raises, like, raises a couple of questions. The first one is if first, if every category that we have is equally hard to learn or is equally easy to learn. The second one is if categories or if the sequence of learning, how the sequence, how the categories are presented affects how participants are adapting to the new situation or to any change in the categorization. And finally, if encountering a similar category or the same category multiple times reduces the time it takes you to learn or to be able to assign items to the correct categories. So first here we have some distributions or histograms of the trials to learning or the trials to reach criterion in each of the different categories. They sort of collapsed across participants and there is some variability in the histograms but a base factor suggests that there is no difference between the trials it takes participants to learn each of these different categories. So it seems that uh, it is equally hard or equally easy to learn any of these four categories we have. Now, in terms of the sequence, again, these are histograms, and I'm presenting the position in the category sequence on the x-axis. So if it was the first, second, third, or fourth in the sequence. Uh, if you see the first uh, distribution in each of those sequences, that's going to be one of the conditions. So for example, for one of the conditions, participants saw first the category anthrax, then lentivirus in red, then uh, cryptococcus, and at the end, food and mouth. And making comparisons here between these distributions just tells us that there's inconclusive evidence or there's evidence against the hypothesis that assumes that the number of trials to learning differs depending on the sequence that you have. For example, the most important example here is cryptococcus. The distributions don't show any difference. So the base factors don't show any significant difference. So it, this suggests that the, um, that the distributions are the same and thus that the history of learning is not affecting how quickly you learn to make categorizations in these environments. Now, we have here the accuracy of participants across trials. On the left, we have trials before a change, starting from minus 21 trials before there's a change in the category to plus 21 trials after a change in the category. And for example, here, the blue line represents healthy animals. What's your accuracy for, for healthy animals? And you can see that it starts pretty high. It keeps being very high. And at some point we reach the point in the trial where there's gonna be a change in the category. Now there's two possibilities after a change. Either the animal stays healthy, so a healthy animal will be healthy in the next category too, or the animal that was healthy is now gonna be infected, right? So when the animal animals that remain healthy after a change point, Keep the, the participants have the same accuracy, so they can keep categorizing them as healthy. They have no problem. Accuracy is pretty high. However, accuracy drops to around 20% after a change if the animal was healthy, but now is infected. In contrast, for animals that are uh, infected, as we can see, the probability of correctly or the accuracy of participants increases across trials before a change point. And once it reaches a change point, deceased animals are equally hard to categorize into healthy or uh, deceased or infected animals. So we wanted to test a simple model. So we decided to use a modified version of the ALCOV model, like a, a connectionist model, developed in Lee and Navarro in, 20, in 2002. And this model is gonna have three main assumptions. So the first one is that the similarity between the items is gonna be an exponentially decaying function of the dissimilarity between items. And the dissimilarity is measured as the number of 
features that one object that one, that one stimulus has that are not shared with the other. So features that are uh, on item I that item J doesn't have change, it increases the dissimilarity and therefore decreases similarity between items. The second one is that association strengths and strengths or associative strength is going to be a linear combination of the similarity as measured before and some weight. This weight is associated with how many times or how often one of the items is associated with a category, how, how those exem exemplars are associated with the category. The third one is that the probability of making a categorization decision is just a logistic function or a softmax function of the associative, associative weights. Like other associative learning models, we're going to assume that learning is driven by an error reduction mechanism. So we're going to just update the weights associated to the categories, to the associative weights, by a delta rule, which uses a teacher signal that uh, takes the value of plus one or deactivation if the category indeed uh, corresponds to a category K. And it takes a value of minus one or the association weight if it doesn't belong to that category. The idea is to move associative weights into the direction of the category that the stimulus belong to. So we wanted to compare the performance of two different assumptions. So the first one was just if the category weights were updated on each trial as in any, any other normal model. However, the second one was if we could improve the fit of the model just by assuming that infected animals were reset after a change in the category, but we left the healthy animals the same. So what we found is that the model that assumes that there's a reset, that the associated weights, the weights associated with the stimulus that belong to the infected category, if those are, re if those are changed to their original value, the model approximates the responses or the accuracy of the participants better than the original model. So we ended up with more questions than answers. So the idea is, so we studied category learning in a situation where categories change as participants learn to make those decisions. And we found evidence that some stimulus and category associations are reset when there is a change in the category structure. However, we want to try different categories. So because ours had very low base rates of infection, so there were very few animals for any category that were infected at the same time. So that might play a role in why it is why the model that assumes that those animals are those weights are reset. Uh, that could be an explanation. So we have very few animals that are infected, so it's easier to just reset those values and then continue with the learning process. The other one is that we want to try different uh, category domains in order to test whether the, this reset idea is specific to something like uh, diseases or is more generally applied to other things, not only animals and diseases. And that's it. Thank you.